Hey guys, this is Chesney Hawks here. You are watching My Hammers 11 with the one and only Russ. Thanks, Ches. Hey everyone, Russ and My Hammers 11. Hope you're all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell icon so you may have any time I put new content on. As always, I'd like to thank our lovely channel sponsors, Untuck It. Another episode, another fan. This one was recommended a few weeks ago. We interviewed Charlie, Charlie Roxburgh, and he went, you need to get Timmy in. You need to get him on. So so he's finally on. So it's Timmy. How you doing, hey, man? How you guys? doing, boss? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, man. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all ready. I'm not too bad. The sun is shining in Hornchurch. So what That's can we worry about? And lockdown's finishing, sun shining. What more could we ask for? <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, beautiful thing, beautiful <laughs> thing, beautiful thing. Uh, and West Ham are doing well. You know, we haven't had to worry about West Ham for about a week and a half now. With no, this there's, international there's no stress in my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from you, you obviously you just had an operation. Canal. Yeah, yeah. I had a bit of surgery, so uh, you can't really see it, but but like uh, my sutures and stitches and all that kind of stuff going on, but. You know, on the road to recovery now, so all good. Good, good. And you're styling up a beanie hat as well, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's just, just to cover everything, so it, yeah. it, it's not a horror show then. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to blur, pixelate your face like we're in crime yeah. watching. Like <laughs> but how have you been, apart from the surgery, how have you been in general in this weird world we live in now, my friend? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been an interesting sort of like journey over the last couple of years. So we run like a fashion label called King. Uh, you might have seen it on some of the other channels like Hammers yeah, Chat. Got, yeah, um, Gons where, where's King all West the time. Yeah, TV. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we're big West Ham fans. We're based in Stratford. Um, we know a few of the players as well. So they sometimes come down to our place and pick up some stuff like Mikel, Antonio and Darren Randolph and those guys. So they're, and they're really cool. And um, yeah, so we just got our online store and We've just been working our way through this whole lockdown thing, just growing the brand. And we're literally a stone's throw from the stadium as well. So it's easy oh, to get to the uh, to the games, especially in week games, straight out of the office into the ground, oh, you know. So Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. So, yeah, so it's, it's been a bit of a weird one, but, mm. um, you know, we, we're doing all right. And like I said, we've got... Pretty much everyone who works for us is a West Ham fan, so it's something that kind of <laughs> runs through the brand a little bit. We've got a little yeah. bowling line. We can name things after East, areas in East London, and so it's, yeah, you, you can see little kind of snippets in there, just a little yeah. nod to our sort of background and whatnot. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. And and, and you know, from a from a sort of um, an e-commerce perspective, obviously you've always been on. You know, obviously you know it's. I mean, knowing my wife, I mean, the fucking Amazon guy knows me by first name, This it seemed, at the moment, <laughs> and <laughs> the DPD guy. All right, Barry, hello. <laughs> Good old Barry. Yeah, Barry online, DPD online guy. It's, been, it's been crazy. Because uh, yeah. we sell to a lot of stores as well, so um, yeah. all around the world as well. But especially last year, so many of them were shut, and, and everyone yeah. just kind of turned to e-com. And then for us, it was all about, just creating really good digital content and telling everyone about our story and that that, that sort of like self-started East London um, sort of background of what we do and, and how we started the brand. We've not really been having any money and I mean, I learn on the job and all that mm. kind of stuff. So it's quite an interesting story. We always want to carry that through, like uh, our people sort of interpret our brand it's like certain types of people that we like to to wear it and yeah. certain footballers that will pick out and say right that's the guy we really like him we like his style we think it fits him with a brand and so, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a good thing and you will see people will see more and more of that over the next year we're really going to start bringing that sort of east london west Ham connection in quite a lot more cool. um yeah. so it's cool yeah obviously c kids who support other clubs wear it as well um you yeah know, you don't so want to just we don't, don't, don't want to alienate those guys to like west ham no jeez yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'd be in trouble then <laughs> in not at the yeah, moment we're, we're, we're in yeah, we're champions league at the moment yeah we're all yeah exactly right. we're yeah, yeah. a lot of manchester united fans wearing it as well because really with, um yeah we've got there's a guy called rents who's like a youtuber football youtuber yep. who's a big man U fan and he wears our stuff all the time so we're quite close with him um yeah. and off the back of that a lot of a lot of united fans 
So I do quite a few podcasts with him as well. And we talk about football. And when West Ham played Man U the other week, we had like a Perfect. pre-match hour long chat about stuff. And it's good. Yeah. It's just good to have different perspectives. And now I feel yeah. like I'm in that company now because we're in like fourth and, fourth and fifth place. Yeah. I don't feel left out. I feel like I've no. got a valid point, you know. It's so true. To me. <laughs> yeah, they do. Because you're like, do you know, the other day I was interviewing a guy the other day and um, we were talking. We were talking about, yeah, oh, I saw it. Oh, yeah. Oh, we were talking about Declan Rice and, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, leaving for a top four team. I said, yeah, but it's only because we're fifth, you know. <laughs> He's like, you know, I yeah, forgot I we're fifth. Yeah, we're, we're top five club, you know. It's ridiculous. I think uh, my, my take on it right now is if we can continue in this form, not just yeah. for this season, but carry into next season, and, they, and we change the culture of the club into being a culture where we think about a squad instead of a team. And Definitely. we have multiple first 11s and multiple players mm. in different positions. So if someone gets injured, someone else comes in. Yeah. Or we do stuff like we did in that Villa away game where we played a, a, a team, which I was, what is this lineup? But it was the mm. right team for that game. And we yeah. need more of that, I think. And I, then I think if we can continue that, you know, people like Rice and stuff will stay longer because yeah. he's, he's, he's just killing it in the, United, in the England team and Lingard yeah. as well. And that moment, why does he need to leave? I know it's about honest, yeah, but if we start, you're, you're totally right. We've got you're you know totally right. no reason for him to leave. Not at all. And and you know, and obviously the last two England games, man of the match have both been West Ham players. Um yeah. technically one on loan, but hopefully it'll be a West Ham play in the summer. Um so, and, yeah. and obviously Suchek scored a, a hat trick, didn't he? A perfect hat trick last the other yeah. last week as well. Um yeah, I mean it's I mean, you know, I mean, you know, yeah, on Twitter and there has been this sort of change in attitude amongst West Ham fans at the moment. It's, you know, we've got, you know, I'm, I mean, I, I've been, I work, I've been doing the stuff at West Ham. We're working at the club for 20 years, I reckon. Um, and, and this is the most excited I've been, I think, being a West yeah. Ham fan, being a West Ham, you know, being involved in the club. So, because it's so much buzz around the place, whether it is on it does, their stuff. It does feel whatever. legit as well. Like it yeah, feels like there's yes. some sort of stability and it feels like there's a plan. Even yeah. when we were under Bitch and uh, to a lesser degree with Pardew, we had a bit of success. It felt mm. fleeting. It was like, oh, we'll, we'll get this yeah. bit of success and then it'll just go back to how it was before. Yeah. And we never built on it and it never felt like there was any sort of long-term strategy. Whereas with Moyes, mm. hats off to Moyes because I wasn't, when he came back, I was like, oh man, like, wait, like, <laughs> This is just yeah. going to be so boring. But, the, you know, he's he's been given enough time to start implementing his strategy and that's and it's starting to bear fruit. And you can see the type of player he wants and it's going to take a yeah. bit of time to get rid of the guys he doesn't want. Mm. And then that's how you build that sort of consistency like he did with Everton. And a lot of people say that, but that is what he's doing. It's like, this is my blueprint and this is a, this, under the resources I've got. This is where I can take this team. And, mm. you know... If it weren't for that that little collapse against Arsenal, we'd be joint. You know, we'd be right up Chelsea's backsides in four, in, four, in fifth. You know? true, yeah. Who yeah, would have thought true. that after that little run of games? You know, Tottenham, Arsenal, Man U, Man City. Well, we're still yeah. winning it. Yeah, and we still, still got, and we still got, we still got to play them all anyway. And I mean, who thought that at the beginning of the season when the fixtures came out and we were, we thought, oh, we're not going to get a point till Fulham oh, away. Yeah, I, I think like, it was. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they've. The, the, next, that the next three or four games is the critical. Yes. Critical. Absolutely. So we get to that little run where we should win some games. Like there's some tricky games coming up, but we definitely can get results. We've just got to yeah. believe in it. And I think the players, like I was talking to my brothers about this. He's a big West Ham fan as well. And I thought it was a bad time for the international break, but he, yeah. he thinks it's a good time. He's like, well, what you know, we have we've got players who are doing so well who are on duty. And we've got a bit of time to like plan and for people to rest and have Masuaku yeah. back and Ogbonna and so on. And those players just give us another dimension. Um, mm. So it's, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think we'll get into Europe. I'm not sure where, mm. what competition. But I do think we'll get into Europe this season. I do. Yeah. I don't think the I've wheels got... will come off. Our, our form is too good. No. Yeah, no, I really, I, and I, it's, it's a really good chat about sort of the, the relative success we've had in the last, say, I don't know, 15 years or so, you know, those those three or four seasons that we've had relative success, it has been fleeting. You're right. It's, it's followed up with four or five shit seasons. And it seems, 
Oh, you terrible. Know, like, Will's come off getting it's, relegated yeah, or... It's so true. ...fighting relegation I mean, and managing to get sacked. Terrible. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, the, the bowling season was our last good season after this, before, the, but it was because yeah. it was the last season at the bowling. It wasn't because yeah. it was like, and it was, it was just the perfect storm. And we had like, you know, the perfect player, perfect manager. It just worked. And then as soon as, you know, then the wheels fall off. And but as you said, now it's where we finish next season. If we finish next season, seventh or whatever. And then the, the following season, sixth or seventh, then that shows we're yeah. building something, man. And um, well, I think, um, I yeah, think the I'm, difference this time is, like Moyes is, a, is he's just a pragmatic person. He's a pragmatic yeah. manager. Yeah. And when you're pragmatic, that's with pragmatism comes stability. It might not be the most mm. exciting thing in the world, but you, you, I feel more confident that there's a consistency there. And not, not, not a lot's going to change between what we're doing now and what we might be doing this time next season. We'll still mm. be consistent. We'll still be hard to beat. We'll still be well organised, but we might have a bit better quality, which might be our finish yeah. teams like Arsenal off. Um, and I think we'll need that because I think some of these other teams will improve a lot. But yeah. I, I think, I hate to say this, but I think we've got a, an opportunity to do kind of what Spurs did. Yeah, Red Knapp, then Pochettino and so on, where they, you know, they were knocking on the door of Europa League and then they just got, kept getting into the Europa League every season for like four or five yeah. seasons, always in the Europa League. And then suddenly, bang, they were champ in the Champions League. And then they were mm. a top four contender, and it took them time. They yeah. they 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 did it over the course of whatever it was, like seven eight years, and that's yeah. what we need to do. We're not going to yeah. suddenly be relegation contenders to Champions League qualifiers. That's like such a massive jump. So I yeah. think sometimes it needs to take a bit of time, and I think that's what Moyes means by I'm "not sure we're ready yet," because yeah. my biggest fear is that getting into Europe is going to call the owners out. Because they're going to mm. have to spend money, and if you're yeah. in the Champions League, I mean, if we do, God, they're going to have to spend 200 million quid just to compete. Mm. It's going to be yeah. embarrassing, and you know, I don't want a seven-two at home to buy Munich like Spurs. No. I just, I'd rather not be yeah. in there. You know, yeah, so yeah. they're going to have to spend money. Yeah, no, it's very true. They are, and I, I think. Yeah. I've I've got a terrible I've, my <laughs> my my West Ham pessimism uh, but pessimism yeah yeah pessimism whatever it is um is that we finish fifth and then Arsenal win the Europa League and Tottenham win the Carabao Cup it means I think we could, we won't qualify for Europe it's and we true, finish yeah. fifth yeah because Tot because then the fourth place. Happens. It's, it, I don't know. Hopefully, Man City will do the, the do the quadruple, and we won't have any problem at all. But you know, it's just like it's typical West Ham. You know, yeah. we just get to a situation where you know you, you know us. Yeah. It's it's it can just happen. And Spurs will finish below us in the and qualify because they won the they qualify for the the conference because they won the Carabao Cup, and then Arsenal would have gone into the Champions League. So the fourth place Champions League spot in the league will go to the UEFA Cup right. um, yeah. or something like that. But you know, it, it'll just. But, yeah, but that's just so us. It'd be so. I mean, we. I mean, I remember when we finished fifth last time under Harry, and and we had to go for the Intertoto Cup, didn't we, to get into Europe and stuff like that. Yeah, so, we were uh, most unlucky, didn't we? <laughs> Even but, when we finished third, we were banned, and it was like, yeah, oh, it was yeah, brilliant. And there was no, there was no TV coverage as well. So there's, there's hardly any games right. covered of that. It's just, but it is just us, and I think that's why. I think that's why a lot of people. You, I was talking to someone the other day about it, and they were saying that you know, like when some teams are sort of do really well in one season you know people sort of turn their nose up at them a little bit it seems with West Ham everyone's sort of on board with West Ham doing well like you know what I mean like in like it might be because I don't know David Moyes they think he's you know he's a football man it's like redemption and Declan Rice is such an integral part for the England squad and you know all these types of things it seems that they're not yeah. no one's really slagging us off for finish for I being think we just it feels elite. like we've got um I was talking to someone about this yesterday as well, and it feels like West Ham are kind of a little bit of like uh, everyone's. I'm not saying it's everyone's second favorite team. They're a bit. They're a bit trendy to like West Ham right now. Yeah, and it's because we've got young English players. We play good football. We do play good football, even though we're hard to beat. And we've got likable players. So like Antonio is yes. a likable guy. Declan Rice is likable. Jesse Lingard has found a new lease of life, and he's kind of. Yeah, shut definitely. his haters up to a degree even me like i, I was like oh, i'm not sure about lingard he's just more interested in snapchat but now i'm like oh actually this guy's really matured and he's such a nice yeah. guy 
and we just seem to be a likable team whereas and i think that's a big thing it's just likable players and we don't we play football try and play football the right way and we haven't got a manager that's unlikable like some clubs do so yeah. we just and and the lockdown has helped because there's no fans there so it's just actually all about the team and the club and the players and there's nothing else going on that that might be a distraction to for other people to not like west ham for whatever reason so yeah it's just yeah it's a weird time isn't it like it is be... it's a strange time and 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 i think uh, you know there's obviously the, the big debate about whether fans not being at the stadium have helped the team out and i think initially it did because christ you remember like in august just before everything kicked off you know we sold grady um, oh it would have been that game Mark, yeah that Mark's tweet game. That Newcastle game, then obviously losing against um, against Arsenal as well in the league, um, it yeah. would have just been, you know, so it would have been oh. awful. So actually, it helped. But then again, yeah. having the fans at the at the Arsenal game at London Stadium, for example, we would never have conceded those three goals. No, no chance. No chance. We'd have ended up probably winning about four one five. You know, we were yeah. we were flying. So you know, it, it yeah. sort of swings and roundabouts. I think now the fans get if you know, obviously, I think you know, we should have ten thousand back in for the Southampton game if Boris's roadmap works. That would be awesome. That would be awesome because I think it just you know. It's, but if you know, if the fans are in there now, it would give the the players that actually ten fifteen percent, which I think would just help us over the line a little bit now. But. Uh, it's yeah, exciting, it has, though, isn't it? It's, it's, it's cool. It is, yeah, and, it's, it's, and, it, and it, that has definitely bought Moyes time as well because yes. he's not had that pressure of, you know, there is pressure when, when the fans are there, whether they're doing well or totally. not. And it's given him a chance to say, right, this is my way of doing things. It might not work straight away, and it didn't because we nearly got relegated. But he's then been able to just implement his, his way of thinking to the point where I think now that fans, he's got credit in the bank. So now when yes. fans come back, if they see a bad game or performance, they're like, no, 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 trust him, Wiz. I'm yeah. not going to get on his back because actually I've seen enough over the course of this season. And literally everyone has watched every game on TV. So there's no excuses now where people just read something in the paper yeah. or watch that, they watch the highlights. So everyone can see what he's doing. So I think he's got a lot of credit in the bank and people will give him a bit more slack now in terms of yeah. if things don't go so well or we lose a game we thought we were going to win. So I, don't, I think... Um, that 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 in that side of things it has helped about the fans being there definitely definitely and, and as you said i mean you know i think you know we know that all we want for a west Ham team is is 11 people <laughs> who are gonna have a go and and try yeah and, exactly. yeah and that's what they're doing and you know it's not their fault if they're not you know all Messi's, you know, or Ronaldo's. The fact is, they're having a go and they're wearing, they're keeping the shirt and they're having a the good old. You know, I just think for me, it's it. The, it's it's one thing that I haven't had to worry about in in lockdown <laughs> is West Ham, you know, and it's nice when you're doing the calculations and you're not calculating whether we're going not going to be in the league yeah. or not, but <laughs> where we finish, and it's like you know to yeah, finish fifth or fifth or or seventh, it, it's, it's it's such a turnaround, you know. So I'm still I, I'm um, still looking up, saying you know where's yeah. Chelsea or where Leicester going to lose like yeah. drop points. I'm still looking up. I'm, not, I'm thinking. We're going to win more games this season, so yeah, let's see where we can finish. I just exactly. hope we just finish above Spurs and those guys. That, they that's my own. Bit, I don't know yeah, I mean, they that, even near us. I don't oh, even get that. That that's that's what annoys me. I mean, yeah, Spurs are so Spursy, and I mean their running's not too bad. I think they've probably got quite an easy running. Um, you know, we've. I mean, we get these next few games out of the way when we come to sort of late April, early early May. We've got four or five piss, not piss easy games. There's no oh, yeah. game easy, but you know we've got the te and traditionally teams. teams. Go on, come on. Hello. Yeah, I'm still here. Still here. That's all right. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> it's really you that there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just I'm just saying that you know it's it's all the teams uh, you know we should be beating, and obviously finishing the season against Southampton. With ten thousand fans, hopefully in the stadium, it's a nice way to finish the season, and it, and it sends them off, you know, for the summer, for the Euros or whatever, and then come back, whether it's you know Europa League qualifiers or Champions League qualifiers or even the Betway Cup final. You know, we get to the final of the Betway Cup again. Um, we'll have sixty thousand fans back in the stadium. It'll be awesome. It'll be awesome, and then hopefully we can just ride that crest of that wave. Um, 
yeah, no, it's exciting times, man. It's exciting times. It is good. <laughs> you froze. <laughs> oh, you froze such a bad boy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got most of that. I mean, um, I think uh, one thing that's worth considering as well is like at the end of the season, you get five or six games where most teams, half the teams have nothing to play for. Yeah. And on the beach and you get these weird um, games like we had when we played Everton with uh, Sam Allardyce. to care about that. They didn't. We beat 3-0. Yeah. So I think you're yeah. going to get a, more, a lot of that where we, we might grab points from those kind of games too yeah definitely so we need to be up around the mix going into that time because i think it's going to be some weird results coming those that last sort of four or five games anyway because they Agreed. always are so if we're near or thereabouts you know by the by the end of april or yeah sort of mid mid to late april then i think we're we'll be in, in good stead we'll see what, see what we do man you know i think it's yeah. you know isn't it every place is two million pound extra in terms of prize funds so yeah, something to play yeah. for, isn't it? Yeah, something to play for. So we man. could have another fifteen mil in the bank. Well, that's the idea. I mean, Be you nice. know, uh, by all accounts, I think I think Gon said it in his video like months ago. You know, um, you know, Moyes' contract gets renewed when he finished thirteenth. So clearly, that's where the club thought yeah. he was, they were going to finish. So if we finish anywhere, yeah. you know, fifth or sixth, that's another twelve, fifteen million, seven, you know, forty, fifty exactly, million yeah. pounds. So we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. Funny football's a funny old game, as they say. Fingers but crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. The, fir- the first question I asked 20, 21 minutes into the interview is why West Ham? Too? We've been talking West Ham like for the last twenty minutes. Why is it your club? So it's a family thing. So I grew up in uh, in in the sort of Manor Park, Ilford area. Yeah. Um, my aunt Gwen is well known person over West Ham, so she was a, a steward, um, yeah. and she now looks after uh, the. She's kind of semi retired, but she looks after the youth team set up now as well. She looks after nice. the kids and like makes sure everyone's got their parking spots and their cups of tea and so on and so forth. Lovely. Um, so she was the person who introduced me to going over to West Ham. Oh no! I think I think Timmy's gone. I think Timmy's gone. That's it. Oh. We're back in. We're, we're back, back in. in. We'll give it one more try. If not, we'll, we'll whack on. If not, we'll whack on Zoom later on. So don't worry, Cara. Yeah. So you're saying um, about, about you know giving all the yeah, so, new, so, the cup of so teas and stuff. And... Yeah, she was. Uh, she was. She was. She worked a lot over there. She was a steward. And back in the, I think it was around the sort of early to mid eighties. I was like just a small boy. She was like, I'll take. Tim over to West Ham to see uh, to see the game. And what I mean, there was no health and safety back then, so she would sneak me in. She yeah. would be dealing with stewardy things, and I would stand up against the wall or get players autographs before the game, and then I wouldn't have a seat. Um, I would be standing against the wall in the West Stand watching the game, standing next to my aunt who was a steward, one of the main stewards, yeah. um, and I, and it was like that for years. Um, and I think my first game was. I remember it was we beat West. I think we beat West Brom one nil, and Tony Cotty scored a header. Um, one of his first games, but I was too young to really know what was going on. I just knew yeah, that yeah. I was there to support West Ham, and that's it really. And from there, I got the kit and all the scarf and everything. And I used to go to the Porter Cabbage shop and get and I, my first real big, big season was the eight five eight six season where I was wow. just old enough to know what the implications were uh, yeah. winning the league or competing in the league and so on and so forth. Um, so that was like, that's really, it, it was a family thing. And I, all my cousins support West Ham. Uh, my brother supports West Ham, my mum and dad, my sister. Um, and I was a season ticket holder. Like, I don't even know how many years. Um, and then, I, and then I, and then I was traveling a lot when I was yeah. probably in the, like in my twenties. So I, I wasn't a season ticket holder then. And then when I came back, I got my season ticket again. So in the London stadium, for example, I've been there like since day one. 
yet. Well, I suppose it's only down the road as well so, for you from the office. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so it's like it's yeah, it's it's in my blood, man. So, and I've met a lot of wicked people, especially since moving the ground. Although I'm not a fan of that ground, socially, I've met so many new people. Yeah, just because of things like boats and stuff like that, yeah. the Hammers Chat guys, and that's how I got to know Charlie and so on. And it's just been cool, like you know, to do that kind of stuff. Uh, whereas it yeah. was less of that at Upton Park. Kind of used to go to the Working Man's Club, and I'd be with my mates, and it'd be that'd be it. It'd be sitting around a table with people I knew. But now yeah. it's like I've got to meet more people, uh, and I think the internet's played a big role in that as well. Just the way that. Mm. Uh, all the youtube channels uh you can interact with oh, all definitely. those guys and get to know them so yeah. it's been good yeah definitely it's true but that's it, yeah it, that's my story oh it's a cool one man and, it, and i think it's true and it, it, i think the internet and yeah, obviously me I, mean, I said that we've done this channel for about know, 10 months or something like that and i've interviewed people all over the world about west ham you know they support all over the world some people have never even stepped foot in newham do you know what i mean and they're from bangalore or chicago or australia and they support west ham and i just find it's it mad. incredible yeah. it's mental you know you've got all the clubs in the world to pick from and you pick this silly little club in east london who's won fuck all it is we are there's so many famous people support west ham and yeah always the club that's mentioned in films or movies or tv yeah. shows and it's just got this weird sort of attraction. And I don't know what that is, but it's, it's, I think it's that sort of like happy go lucky rags to riches, never quite yeah. winning anything, always almost there. Bobby Moore story, the World Cup, all these things yeah. create this kind of like aura around our club, which doesn't yeah. exist with any other club. And I think if we no. were ultra successful, it wouldn't be the same. Totally, that that totally appeal probably would, wouldn't be there. And I think people no. like it because it's like West Ham have got very gallows humour, our fans, and they yeah. kind of revel in the in, in not being quite as good as everyone else. But we don't care because we, 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 we'll follow you through thick and thin. And when we do get yeah. our days, we've always, every single season that I've supported West Ham, there's been two or three results which no one was expecting. Every season, without yeah. a foul. You know, and you know it's coming. You're like, oh, this season something's going to happen where we're going to batter someone and we don't expect it. And yeah. you just hope that you've got a ticket for that game, you know, because like, especially away matches, I've been to some, I like going to away matches a lot. And some of my best memories are from away games where you just turn up thinking we're going to get hammered. Chelsea away last year was a good example when Cresswell scored and we on that awful run. And we had yeah. David Martin in goal and we were thinking... <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a cricket score. But you know what? We're just gonna get on with it and see what happens. And we and yeah. we beat them and we deserved it. it was, and it was amazing. It's just it's just one of those things, isn't it? You, you're right. We know. And, we, in, and the the flip side is, we know every season there's going to be those speed bumps where we have those three or four games where we should win, and we'll lose three 0 to Burnley, or you know, and and that's and that's what I mean. You just don't know every game. You just don't know what's going to happen, what West Ham's going to turn up. And and a little bit more predictable now, I'd say, but it used to be that exact thing. And that's what I love to, That's what I love about West Ham. It's it's so unpredictable. And as you said, there are those three or four times a season where we turn up and we just enjoy them so much more than Man United or, or Cities or people like that. And no, you're totally right, my friend. You're totally right. And I'm right. I'm, I'm the same with you. I don't think winning the league would would help us or, or you know because of that exact reason because as you said this sort of gallows humor we know we're never going to win anything and you know if you won something we wouldn't know what to do with ourselves we wouldn't know even now even now people are like worried about europe and going oh if we get into europe our squad size is going to be too small and da, da, da. who gives a fuck you know let's just get the season over with and see how high we can come on but uh no it's all good friend it's all good um and <laughs> it's got I, it was a, I, I did a, a fantastic church church William Churchillian speech, and uh, and it didn't work. And I thought he, I thought he looked a bit. I thought Tim looked a bit bored. I thought he just. <laughs> I was going to say Bang I thought on. he looked. I was thought, I thought he looked a bit bored when I was talking. <laughs> I was like, I know he's giving up. Anyway, I caught, let's, I caught most of it before it cut out. But you're right. Worry. Like games like that Burnley game, and there's always games where you just. 
you think you'd win them, we get like we either get a bad result or we get battered. And yeah. uh, you should just take the rough with the smooth, don't you, as a West you fan, do. I think. You do. Right. Before 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 the internet cogs out again, let, 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 let's do your 11, so your Hammers 11. So obviously, everyone we get on the channel, we ask them to do a Hammers 11. You can pick whoever you want, but the only rule is you have to be alive to a scene and play. That's it. Simples. Okay. Who's in goal? Who's in goal for for the for the the Tim Eleven, the King Eleven, whatever you want to call it? Who's in goal? Ludo McClosco is my goalkeeper. Ludo McClosco, God bless him. Yeah. Top man. Top man. Wicked Ludo. player. Underrated, I think, as a goalkeeper. I think like um obviously he was Czech international as well. Um yeah. I just remember that sort of Billy Bonds era when we kind of stormed the, the second division and got promoted and he was he was an amazing goalie um and he was very consistent as well and we've had yeah. good goalies before and since yeah um like i really liked phil parks as well but mm. i think i just ludo just because that was a time when i was going to west ham literally home and away all the time and um just got good memories of him having some like storming games keeping us in in uh yeah, in games like up at Middlesbrough and the Man U game when we stopped them winning the league and so on. So yeah, my 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 goal is Ludo. Yeah, he's a top man, isn't it? and you're right. He he, he 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 epitomised West Ham, didn't he? He'd have those three or four worldies every season yeah. where he was unstoppable, and then he'd flap for one, bless him, and you go, yeah. where, where, where's where's the disconnect? Yeah, where did that come from? Yeah. yeah, it's like surely you know uh, there was talk. I remember someone I was interviewing someone who spoke about Ludo and and. Uh, they, they they mentioned that Man United was sniffing after him before they went for Schmeichel because you know I imagine it's the principle you'd rather be in the tent pissing out than in the tent pissing in or whatever it is you know because he'd always fuck up their season wouldn't the old Ludo bless him it was always against Man United he turned up I love him oh, yeah he brilliant. did yeah yeah <laughs> right okay so he was Ludo's like... in goal yeah. cool carry on sorry mate you carry on carry on buddy no, no, that's it. I'm done I'm done with Ludo I'm done he's I'm in. done with Ludo <laughs> he's done with Ludo he's got his yes, place sir. he's first in he's line. in he's in Who's next, then? Who's next, mate? Right back is Ray Stewart. Oh, Tonks. Um, yeah, so just super, super solid. Rarely had a bad game. Never missed a penalty. Um, just suit, just solid. And I think he would still be just as good in, in the Premier League if he was playing in this era. But no mm. nonsense right back. What you need. Rarely made a mistake. Ultra reliable. Rarely injured. Um, so, yeah, I think we're back for got to be solid player like Ray so yeah. Tonka's in there for yeah, a right back man. position lovely bloke lovely bloke and and you know it's similar the way you sort of describe Tonks it's a bit like how you would probably describe Sue Fowl at the moment you know in yeah, terms of reliable fun. dependable not yeah. like not flashy just gets the job no. done solid consistent and that's what you want from your forward never made you never mean. really made mistakes nope don't seem really to beat him out. Yeah, no. so you, he would give you at least a solid seven or eight out of ten every yeah. week, and that's yeah. what you want, you know, in your yeah, defence. Definitely. definitely. Right, who's next then? Who's next then? So I'm going to go to left back, and that's uh, yep. Julian Dix. Julian, Julian. Yeah, and that's just purely for entertainment factor. <laughs> <laughs> just putting other players into like Rose Ed, getting in yeah. fights, getting sent off, smashing oh, penalties him. in, free kicks. So yeah, he was like heart on the sleeve player. So he's my he's my left back. Like, yeah, although that was an easy decision that one. Yeah, it was an easy one. Although in today's, I don't wonder how many games he'd play with VAR. You know, <laughs> and the way the the way the forwards fall down now, if you've just ruffle their hair, they'll fall down at the moment. But yeah, Julian, top man. Yeah, my, top. I top might boy. need to do sub later for that one. Yeah, I might sub him on. Go on in. Yeah. Go on in. Are we gonna centre half then, my friend? Then uh, two centre backs. I'm going with a. Four, with four at the back, I'm having Rio Ferdinand. Yes. Um, I'll do these two together. So I've got Rio and Alvin Martin. They're my two nice. backs. Yes. Two nice. England players. Two again, super solid, talented centre backs. Uh, no nonsense. Um, again, like what can I say? Rio was our best young player, and Alvin was probably our, in my lifetime our best sort of centre back that went that I I saw play for West Ham from the early days to when he retired, you know. Um so West Ham through and through as well. So yeah, those two. I think yeah. that's a nice 
That's quite a good back four, that, isn't it? <laughs> that is not a bad back four. And, and, you, and you've you got the guile. Every week, you? No, you've got the guile of, of Rio as well, isn't he? You've got, you got, some no, you've got three sort of no-nonsense players. Yeah, a little bit of finesse. A little I bit of finesse need, in yeah. Rio, bringing it out. Yeah. yeah. Just and, and and by that I'm talking about Rio when he played for West Ham, not when they, you know Man United knocked all that decent stuff out of him. You know, because you you know when he yeah. went to Man United, he became a defender rather than this Berezi type player. You know, which he was at West Ham. Or he could have been at West Ham if he yeah. stayed. But um, hey ho. Oh dear. Anyway, uh, let, let's move into midfield. Then Tim, who are we have in midfield? Go on. Who's your first player? Um, let me think about this. I'm just going to do my formation in my head. So okay, trying, okay. Trying to figure what I've got. So my first midfielder is uh, is Declan Rice. Nice, nice, nice baby. Oh, he's gone again. <laughs> gonna get through it all. Oh, the other one's gonna get through it all. He'll be back in. He'll come back in. He'll You're come still back there. In. He'll come back. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. No, I'm always here. I'm always here, Timmy. No, you're not. I'm still here. We're still here. We're, we're still rolling. You can tell, I, you know, we don't edit any of this. It's all live. So you can see sometimes it doesn't work so well. Sometimes it works better. It's all about the internet. Sometimes the internet's really great. Sometimes it's really crap, isn't it? It's not, it's not a good one today, it seems. But, uh, but yeah, it's all good. Um, we've got some great stuff coming up as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Some really, really cool stuff coming up as well. Some more X Hammer, My Hammers 11s. We've got some more game shows. If anyone's around lunchtimes, Monday to Fridays, we do our partner, we do our live show. There he is, he's back. Sorry, I was just, just doing a bit of a promo. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> You'll be able to edit that bit later. <laughs> oh, no, we just live. Tim, it's all live. We don't do editing. It's funny. So, yeah. so we've got Declan Rice. Declan Rice, you've picked. Declan Rice is my sort of central defensive midfielder. Um, one of the best young players I've seen since I've been watching West Ham. He's only going to get better, and he yeah. will win the Premier League with someone like without doubt. And so he's he's like one hundred percent in my midfield. Um, and I've chosen him because of the other the other two midfielders that I'm going to put in. So my second midfielder is Trevor Brooking. Nice. Um, again, really cultured. I got to see Brooking at the end of his career. Um. But he was still just like such a culture player, that sort of calm head on shoulders which you need in like sort of frantic games, and he just, just bring that sort of again a bit of finesse in the midfield. Yeah. Um, nice. So I'd have Rice as your kind of stopper. You know, he's yeah. going to destroy. He's going to make sure he breaks everything up, and we'll have Brooking in front of him. And then this is a controversial one, and I thought long and hard about this. <laughs> Well, I would have Frank Lampard in my midfield. Um, ah, okay, okay. As much as I'm not a fan of Lampard, his stats die, they don't lie. His stats don't lie. And that guy no, yeah, yeah. scored goals in from midfield all the time. And he went when he went to Chelsea, he proved it. And I think I think I've chosen Lampard a little bit with his sort of career after West Ham in mind and what he could have been at West Ham. Um, yeah. But he. I think uh, him, Rice and Brooklyn would be a mixture of defence, defence, midfield, mastery and attacking flair from the midfield as well. Mm. Um, so those will be my my three in the middle. Nice. Um, and then I'm playing three up top. This was difficult, the three up top, because um, <laughs> we, had, we, had we had some good players. So my first player up top is Dimitri Payet. So... I know he only played it for us for a season and a half, but that guy on his day was unplayable. Oh, unplayable. Yeah. Um, and if he had the oh man, if he'd had the right attitude, if he had the attitude of Di Canio, oh man, what a legend that guy would be! Absolute yeah. legend. So, so um, so just for that game-winning ability of like just turning the game on his head, Piet yeah, makes makes that first eleven. Yeah, um, and he was just—he was just mustard, wasn't he? As a player, you know, you—you you, you know, we, we were obviously fortunate enough to watch him play, and you know, he and we talk about—I mean, we've spoken about the you know that last season, and it just all the stars just aligned that season, weren't it? I mean, he, we had the right player, we had that sort of talismatic, talismatic—I've just made up a word, but you know, a talisman player, you know, and it yeah. was just like the right manager, and it just all worked that season, and. 
he well it wouldn't have we wouldn't have had the season we had if we, we wasn't for Dimitri Payet and you know I know a lot of people oh. are like you know how he left and stuff like that but fuck it you know what I mean he was the, he was he, you know, one of was, I remember that Palace game in the start of that season yeah probably like it was just in like October I think it was and we beat him 3-1 and I remember the interview I think it was with one of the it was one of the defenders I think it was Ward or something like that and I remember that interview and he was like uh they were like oh what do you think of, of West Ham and he was like I'll be honest with you we'd never heard of any of these players so we had we had Lanzini we had Payet yeah. we had Saka we had all these players and he said like, we'd never even heard of them so we had no idea what these guys could do and they just completely took us apart and yeah. I think that's when people realize all right okay West Ham have got some pr- pretty good players here um yeah, yeah, yeah. even Lanzini was a weird one because he came on loan from Al Jazeera and we and was yeah we we weren't going to sign him and then he wasn't even getting in the team and uh, I think he scored like a couple of bangers in a pre-season friendly abroad and I was like watch out for this kid he could be quite good and then it was that yeah. Liverpool game away where he kind of sprung onto the scene and he was great. I mean, I think, I think playing with Payet was really helped him out. I, I think with him, I think with Lanzini, I think the, the for me, the, the, there was obviously, when he was with Payet, it was almost like Payet took the shine off being number one. So, you know, he was yeah. uh, he was like an understudy. The pressure and then, off a little bit, yeah. Exactly. Then he got, gets injured, comes back, and he's he's the number one because Payet's gone. And I don't think he yeah. ever sort of had that. And now, obviously, he's sort of been playing a bit more but with Ben Rama or Lingard, both a lot more skillful than him, arguably. So again, he, you know, I just think it's actually probably benefited him not, um, you know, having people like Ben Rama and having people like Lingard in the team because it sort of takes the pressure off him a little bit. He has, he's not the guy we expect to be. Because I mean, I, I mean, you know, um, when I was doing stuff at West Ham, you know, one of the video guys would go and do training videos. You know, like they do behind the scenes. Yeah him and Payet, Lanzini had a better score ratio on, on, on free kicks when they were doing um, training. He was banging more in yeah. than Payet was, but it was just a confidence thing, I think, with Lanzini, um, which is a shame because, you know, he can be a good player. And, you know, but, you know remember, was it Liverpool sniff round for him once, weren't it? And, uh, oh, yeah, they were, yeah. Before he could um, bust his, his, I think it was his knee, he had a knee injury, didn't he? Um, something like that, yeah. Did it, yeah, for Argentina at the World Cup done his ACL. Yes. Yeah, just, yeah. It's never been the same yeah. since. I mean, I personally, yeah, I wouldn't sell him. Like, everyone's saying oh, we should sell Lanzini, ah. but this is where I come back to that squad mentality. It's like, Lanzini's yeah. not become a shit footballer overnight. Like, he hasn't. It's a, it's a total, it's all in his head. And mm-hmm. that guy will refine his form. He will. I just don't want it to be at another club. And we're like, yeah. oh, well, wish we never sold that guy because now he's killing it again, you know? And we need to have good players, more than one good player in every position because totally. you could have, we could sign Jesse Lingard and Jesse Lingard might get injured for two months. Then what? Yeah. If we've not got a Lanzini or someone like that to come in, what are we going to do? You know, and that and that's, we've got to get out of that mentality because good we point. are in that situation now where if, we, if Antonio gets injured, we're fucked. Like what we, we are yeah. totally yeah, fucked, yeah, yeah. you know, and we're relying on these players not getting hurt and you can't, it's only so long you can ride your luck like that. Until... Well, it's, not, it's not just, yeah, you're right. It's not just injuries now. It's COVID, isn't it? That's the trouble. It's not even people getting injured. Of... It's, it's people, yeah, I mean, you know, at the moment, God yeah, forbid, exactly. there's, 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 there's four cases in the Polish squad at the moment. Fucking Fabianski. What could happen, you know? And, it's, and then, you know, it's and so you're, you're totally right. It, the squad rotation now is not necessarily having, you know, wishing people don't get injured. It's wishing people they don't get COVID because that fucks them up for a few weeks then. And, you know, hopefully if we're in and Europe, we we'll need if, a bigger yeah, squad. And if we, we will. And if we get into Europe, like I was going to say, if we're in Europe, yeah. everyone's going to get game time. And I think everyone, that's that's where the man management and Moyes comes in. It's like, making everyone feel like a valued member of that squad even if you're not yeah. playing playing in day in day out it's like i need you because your time will come um yeah. and that's where i know and see it's slightly unique because the money they've got and the manager they've got but pep does that very well yeah. pep doesn't have a doesn't have a first 11. he has a squad yeah. that he re- rotates and and uses different players in different games for different yeah. scenarios that's why they win everything you know um, and we need to be like a like a less expensive version of that philosophy, in my mm. opinion. Yeah, 
Totally. No, I totally agree. I totally so, agree. And I think, yeah, I, I, I think that there's a few people I think we need to get rid of. Um, more, not necessarily yeah, for a squad, but we're carrying a bit of We are carrying some players. Yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah, so, I agree. And I think also, everyone knows who they are as well. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, we'll put yeah. Piat in. <laughs> right, who's next in. <laughs> there's going to be a few people going to be throwing like pelters at me in the comments at some point for Payet and Lampard, but then, no, then, no, so, no, 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 not know. for Payet. Payet is one of the most <laughs> Payet is one of the most picked players, um, and everyone's and everyone prefaces it just as you done. Oh, I'm going to get a lot of shit, but I'm going to put Dimitri Payet in. He was a fucking. He was like one of the best players in the world when he, he played for done. us. He so done. yeah, you know what did you expect? So, but yeah. So my so my other two players, and this is a bit of a nostalgia thing, but I still think on their day. They were two of the best strikers we've ever had at the club, and they yeah. are, and they go as a duo, Tony Cotty yeah. and Frank McAvinney. They are my yeah. upfront guys. My that 1985-86 season, those two scored something like forty-eight or forty-nine, maybe fifty goals between them yeah. together. I think McAvinney yeah. got twenty-eight in all games, and Cotty got twenty-four, something like that. So it was yeah. like, you know. It was 52 goals or something like that. Cotty is a goal machine. Yeah. I don't know if, you know, some of the younger people won't, won't remember this, but even in that, if Cotty was playing now, he'd be worth like 40, 50 mil. Easy. Easy. Yeah. McAvenny was a bit of a maverick, you know, he, was, he still was a goal machine, but over a less shorter period of time. Yeah. Um, but even he would be worth like a bucket load of money as well. So on, in their pomp, I'd have McAvinny and Cotty up front. Um, so I've probably McAvinny in the middle and Cotty just to the to the right or left. The right, yeah. As a three pronged attack, those three. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that's, just yeah, like that's that. quite strong. Yeah, just like very that. strong. Yeah. Very so strong. That's a good see, isn't it? Oh, right, yeah, my, well, my PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you, you, you just bring in the change in formation. My PowerPoint skills are very good sometimes. Yeah, you know, I can do yeah, it while I'm you're talking. You were doing that while I was talking. So you've done do well. Do it while I was talking. <laughs> the, behind the fourth wall, Toby. Behind the fourth wall, Toby. It's all that, man. But no, I think yeah. I, I and I, I and I like the fact there's there's a bit of sort of recent stuff like that i think deck could walk into any team at the moment i think he's just he walking to any any team in the world to be honest and you know pie and he's a pie he's pomp um oh pie and booking that, that, God. yeah i mean there's a couple of players that were like i was putting them in and out like carrick and tevez defoe dean ashton just based on what his potential was yeah. um you know so like it wasn't like an easy eleven to pick. No, but well, you, actually, you told me it was easy. You text me. You text. You text me. Went, oh, this is easy. My eleven's easy. And I was like, That's okay. because I planned it out earlier. And then when you <laughs> asked me that question, I'd already thought of it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. And obviously Antonio, because he wears your clobber, so you know, you know, he'd be on the bench. Yeah, Antonio's got a shot as well because he's gonna. He will become our all-time Premier League goal scorer. Not that crazy, football started it? in 1996, but you know, yeah. he. He's a uh, he, he's like massively underrated Antonio for what yeah I think well I think I think Mikel would be first to admit that he's not the most technically gifted of players but no. he's a absolute monster I, I, you yeah. would hate to play against him if you're a defender because he does not stop and he would not give you like a moment's rest in a game so he's definitely I mean, he's up there Mikel for sure just for what he brings in terms of that honest hard work rate mm-hmm. and endeavor and he will and he scores goals because he just works so hard yeah you know? yeah he totally, never gives totally. up man that guy is never yeah. leaves anything in the tank after when that game's done he is blowing yeah. out his ass and that's what you, you said it earlier west ham fans just want players who leave everything on the pitch and totally. he's the, the total embodiment of that he and, is. A, and, a, and an amazingly is. nice guy as well like yeah you know, well he wears your clothes so there you know he pops him and gets gets you some clubs exactly. so there you thanks go. michael uh, what uh, you know, he he must be I mean, he must be a, like a an because he's a big boy, you know. He's, he's he's muscular. He must take like an XL at least or double XL. He's a large. Say, he's, he's a large. He's a fuck off. Is he a large? Yeah, he's he's he, when us when I was with him the other day, I was surprised that he was. I thought he was bigger than he was. Yeah, and he's like very like he's very muscular and like his physique is like super toned. And he's he's really yeah. tall. I don't know how tall he is, five eleven, something like that. 
but it's just kind of everything it's just compact you know so he doesn't actually he's not he's not a huge guy but he's yeah. like you know, everything's in the right place when it comes to his like <laughs> physique and that so you know yeah. he's large i'm surprised as well i always thought he'd yeah. be an excel but i mean he's like oh, no yeah. i'm a large i was like okay cool man <laughs> wow Fair enough. i suppose i mean like Dar- he's standing next to darren randolph and randolph's like i don't even know it's called randolph he's six five he's something three, like that yeah six, it must be yeah he's huge he's so tall <laughs> <laughs> but but obviously antonio but then he's got his he's these sort of tree trunks for legs haven't they i mean oh, he, no, he he's take- like he's very stocky yeah yeah, and he tailors. Yeah. They tailor his, his shorts, don't they? So because he likes them really Do tight. They? Yeah, yeah. yeah someone I told me that. that was. And I think I think someone told me that Mark Noble they tailor his. He, Mark Noble uh, he has his his shirts tailored around the around the waist because he likes them. And if you look at them, this, they they look slightly they different. His shirts. So they, yeah, they, they yeah. can they kind of taper in, don't they? Yeah, so he tapers them in. He gets them tapered in, and Antonio just had these sort of almost cycling shorts he wears by the end of him. But I yeah. always just thought that Antonio's legs were so massive that he he was wearing like <laughs> youth size shorts. Like, yeah, you wear youth size shorts with those legs. <laughs> wasn't it? Uh, wasn't it Razor? Didn't Razor have to have like triple X or quadruple X L shorts specially made when he came to West Ham because they, none of them fitted him yet? <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I love Ray. He was eating a lot. He was eating a lot of pies at the time. <laughs> he was. He's a top boy. He was a top boy, Ray. Um, yeah. No, it's. It, I love it. No, and as you said, there's. You know, as you said, like the people like Darren Randolph and Antonio and Deck and Lingard. There's just you know such a nice bunch of boys. You know, they're all so friendly. It's very likable characters. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I, I mean, even Deck. I mean, you know, clearly everyone, all the journalists, all the all the Sky presenters and stuff, talk sport guys, they all love him because he's so honest on his interviews and he's so genuine. And um, I think he's just, I just, he's hope... just loving life and, uh, and yeah. the appreciative of the position that he's in. It's like he's just yeah. living the dream. He's living every kid, every kid's dream and he's yeah. just taking it all in and there's no ego. That's the yeah. that's, I think that's the best way for to describe West Ham right now. We, there's no ego about our club. We're not. Mm. We're not like yeah. We we where we should be, or we should have won this or whatever. We're just like, man. We're just enjoying the ride, you know. And I think that's why people like what we're doing right now. From let's yeah. just take the owners out of it. From the manager and, and the staff in the the back room staff to the players, even down to mm. those youth team players and stuff. I just think Moyes has just brought in this attitude where it's like we're just not going to get ahead of ourselves. We know yeah. what we are. And we're doing yeah. well and we'll just carry on doing it without you know without that ego running through the club because you, know? you do yeah. get that with certain players um yeah you know and that's and, that, and, and that, to reflect on clubs as well totally and that was a slight reservation when when there was talk of jesse coming in wasn't there the fact how you know how he's would his ego would his yeah that's his, what his, i was concerned about uh, yeah me too and but actually it was the perfect signing for us i think at that time we needed that boost that boost of energy and he's a fucking he good definitely player. has given us yeah he's given us such a different dimension i think we would have mm. stalled a little bit without someone like that yeah. um and so he kind of just given us an extra injection that we needed and mm. i think it's i think as well it's just it's just where he is in his life and what he's been through and stuff yeah and he's just matured a person and you know He's not that kid who was doing a snatch on a bus when we needed Brick's phone at the bus in the last season of bowling. He's <laughs> no, not that guy no, anymore. No, no. no. You know, he's grown up and he's like, he's a likeable character. Um, he's, yeah. And so, that's, yeah, that's I exactly hope he it. signs. I really hope he signs. I, I, oh, do, I do. I, I, I think, think he he'll will. get him off a new contract by menu. I think they will offer him a new one. And I think it'll be a mug to take it. Because that's like going back to your missus after she's found someone else and then decides oh actually i do like you still so come back i'd be like no nah, but, no no no, no no but it's, it's it's one of those ones where the where, you, where the where you've left and the missus has seen you on facebook and you've and you've maybe uh you've lost about 20 pounds got a bit and better, probably, yeah and then oh, she wants you back actually, no, you're, you're not that bad you're yeah, not yeah. that bad like, actually no. you made your decision <laughs> <laughs> you made your bed now line it ollie ollie yeah. you line it <laughs> sorry you're not having him back he's ours <laughs> He's ours. Anyway, so I think that I think they'll sort of deal out. I think I, yeah, Lee Gar's I, only I got a year will. left, and yeah, he he'd be an idiot to stay there because he were only going to just go behind Bruno. If Oli yeah. really wanted him, he he wouldn't have sent him out on loan. No, no, and and I think he 
And also, I think, you know, and obviously the, the fact with someone like, you know, when, when Nobes came out and said, you know, obviously he's retiring in the next season, um, you know, to, to anyone in that midfield, um, to Declan, to Suchek, to Lingard, to Fornells, you know, it just gives them a, you know, there, there's one place, there'd be one more place, one less place competing for a, a starting lineup, isn't it? And yeah. someone like Rice as well, knowing that, you know, he'll be, you know, if, touch wood you know uh if he's still here next summer then he's got the keys to the castle isn't he he's he's the main man he's yeah, he's mr west ham yeah. now he'll take over so um i think it's worth yeah. mentioning as well is that as like four now is they're, they're going to be a year older a year more yeah. experience and uh, he's uh, he's coming for a lot of unwarranted criticism this season in my opinion mm. he is a frustrating but he does make some poor decisions now and then and his finishing could yeah. be better but look how much we missed him in the last uh, few I'm, games, like I have stitches totally in that together yeah. in yeah. that team, and he's the kind of player where you don't necessarily notice everything when he's playing, but when he's not yeah. playing, you're like, oh man, what a massive hole in the midfield yeah. we've got, you know. Yeah. So I think people need to like just he's, roll back on the criticism of him because I think he's, he's a, I think he's a good player. Yeah, totally, and I I am totally. I, he's the glue. He's he's the one of the. He's a, you know he's that he last piece shit, of that stuff. puzzle. He does the shit city work of covering yeah. and tracking and when he's off the ball his work rate off the ball is phenomenal yeah. um and he just uh, you know people the, the problem nowadays is, is is that you just kid especially young young like younger fans or people on twitter they're all experts and they all think that they're yeah. but they all base it off like oh what skills can you do or what tricks can you do or what worldies can you score and and football, I, I I played at quite a high level of football when I was younger. And when you get to like that higher level, mm. it, it's all about tactics and discipline and knowing your role. And yeah. he and, and he's an unsung hero who knows what his role is in that club, especially off the ball. Um, mm. And which is why Moyes likes him so much, you know. Yeah. And sometimes there, Henderson's another one. At Liverpool, like he gets yeah. coked off so much. That guy is a sick player. Henderson mm. is a sick footballer, and he when he's not playing for Liverpool, they miss him like you wouldn't believe. Mm. And he, cause he does all the all the dirty hard work that no one else likes doing that you that you miss when he's not playing. Um, so yeah, I'm a big four and hours advocate. Oh, I am as well. I mean, obviously, as we said before, we've interviewed quite a few ex players, and when we interview the ex players and they give their 11s, there's certain players that they pick that we as fans don't pick. So yeah. if I look at sort of the early, sort of the, the early 2000s, you know, like, I don't know, people like Nige, um, Bobby, all those people, they all pick Hayden Mullins. They all pick yeah. him because he's the same type of player. You know, in the eight, I've interviewed people in the 80s teams, they all pick Jeff Pike. Um, in the early 90s, they all pick I Pete thought about Pike. Yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, he's a, a, I love Pike. Yeah, yeah. But they're all that sort of like, water carrier players and and need four nows yeah players. you do you do need them and i think you know they get forgotten bec about because as you said they don't score the goals so you know in 20 30 years time you won't necessarily remember pablo four nows you remember someone else they were in discussion that pablo four nows will come up in discussion do you know what i mean because mm. the, in the history books he's not going to be top goal scorer you might talk about Mikel antonio no. or, or 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 ben rama because he scores when, when if he ever does score or jesse lingard or you know those he type will. of players he will and yeah. i think when he scores it'll be like tevez he'll score an absolute hatful for the rest of the season ben rama you know, is again is going to be uh, i think an integral part of our the future Few, next yeah. few years at West Ham, and he yeah. will become um, a really important player for us. Uh, I'm confident of it. Confident. No, I totally agree. But, like that game of Villa, him, Lingard, and Antonio tore Villa a new one in that game. Oh, uh, yeah. We could we could have been four or five. That could have been, and they couldn't yeah. couldn't they just they couldn't handle them. Couldn't handle them. And Ben no. Rama's like, right, he's that goal and a bit of confidence, and he'll just start smashing them in. He will. Good, it's yeah. good. We've got good, so good players, man. We do. We've got, yeah, we've got good. some good players. We've got lots of options as well. Do you know what I mean? It's like, that's why I like, you know, the fact is when, when the team's open, you know, when you see, I don't know, the, you know you, there's always one or two surprises. And if we're surprised as fans with some of the selections, how's the fucking opposition know what team we're going to put up? Do you know what I mean? So if we're yeah. surprised, they're going to be surprised. And that's great for us because they will, you know, so no, I think it's great, man. That's great. I think it's brilliant. Anyway, 
Two man, it's been a pleasure, an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks man. for having me on. I really appreciate it. It's, uh, it's really it was, fun. It was good to uh, to have a good chat with uh, someone who's well versed in the West Ham history and so on. You know, it's good. Well, I've, I've become more well versed since doing this. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> but no, yeah, it's brilliant, man. Thank you. And obviously, thanks to everyone for watching. As always, you know, yeah, or you listen to it, much, whatever guys. you do, give it a like, give it a share. Obviously, check out check out King Apparel. Um, you know. Probably got yeah. some sales coming on soon. Got some sales got a new coming soon. Coming out new in about ten days. So there's a Perfect. sale on right now. We might have a little code going on for Easter. So if anyone wants some new club art over Easter weekend, get onto the site. Um, and we have got a new collection coming out. And you'll see, you'll be seeing a bit of West Ham featuring in our loot books probably later this year. So we're working on a few things around that. Um, so yeah, man. Thanks for the support from everyone, and you know, for listening to me waffle on about my limited West End knowledge. And uh, yeah, it's good. My pleasure. Brilliant. That's it. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. And for myself and for Timmy, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Get those jabs when you get your uh, your appointments. Come on, you irons, and we'll see nice you again one. very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Thanks Much a lot, guys. Love. See you later. Bye-bye. See bye you. Bye. Cheers, man.